Well, here we are. Uh, we're actually uh, on I-70 Speedway. And we <laughs> I-70 Speedway. We're on I-70, and we're on our way from, uh, actually, Silverthorne is where we're staying, over to Vale. And you can see uh, part of here of how beautiful the drive is. Some snow up there in the crevices. But it's about a 30 minute drive from Silverhorn, Silverthorne over to Vale. And uh, just about the first 20 minutes of the drive is a climb. Even though it doesn't seem like it, you are climbing all the time. is continually shifting in and out of overdrive because of the grade that you've got but you can see here what a beautiful drive it is <coughs> from Silverthorne to Vail to Vail there's going to be a sign right here we're getting ready to go by Copper Mountain Ski area we're already past Frisco as you can see way up ahead up there up on the up above tree line it looks like in most of these places it says Vale 18 minutes but uh, you can see the snow up on the, the peaks up there above tree line this is uh, let me think I'll have to count up Friday Saturday Monday, Monday Tuesday Wednesday, Thursday. This is our sixth day out, me and the woman I board with, Judy, on this little trip that we are kind of combining racing and going to the Teva Mountain Games in Vail. Teva. Excuse me, Teva. And uh, those are ski Those things. are ski slopes, Copper Mountain ski slopes. <coughs> Too steep for me. I wouldn't even want to come down there in a sled, let alone on skis. Me either. I've got a bunch of snow piled up over here on the left side. I don't know why. Must have been something going on. Once again, we're starting to hit a pretty good grade, and the old car is shifted down again. The old four-cylinder kind of struggling there to deal with the altitude and this uh, grade that you have to go up in order to get up over the pass to get to Vail. It looks like it could have been a half pipe. What's a half pipe? That's where they do the snowboarding on the half pipe, where they do the tricks. They jump, oh, okay. Jump up in the air and carry on. Boy, that camera's dirty. Look at the dirt in there. Oh my gosh, it's from all that racing. Yeah. It is dirty, honey. You may have to blow that out. You may have to when we get home. My ears have popped for the first time. How about you, Grandma? Not today. Not today. Mine just popped for the first time. No, mine have popped before, but not today. There goes a red Colorado license plate. I don't know. We've seen about five or six different colors. Blue, green, red, yellow flowers. Orange. Orange. Grandma took off the cruise control. Cruise control, thank you. I can't think of the words to say. <coughs> what are we slowing down for? Well, I thought this was going to be a steep grade, but it's not. No, there's no downhills when we get over the pass. Oh, I thought there were downhills. No, no. We are continually climbing here. Even though we're going down. Right. I think uh, Silverthorn. We're, we're not going down because if we were going down, we'd be gaining speed. We're slowing down. That yes, means we're we are. On either level ground or uphill. That's true, and cars are going to pass us like crazy. Anyway, 
I started to say the altitude at Silverthorne, I think, is about 75, and uh, to the top of this pass is going to be 10.6. Uh, okay, we went over the pass. Now we are starting downhill slope. Now this takes 15 minutes <laughs> to get down this side in the veil. Also, right there where we just went over is the Continental Divide, of which I'm sure all of you geography nets wherever know that the Continental Divide divides the watershed in the uh, United States and that everything east of the Continental Divide ends up in the Mississippi River. Everything on the west side ends up in the Colorado River. One goes to the Gulf, one goes to the Gulf of California. You'll notice some of the trucks going up the other side, some of them get down pretty slow. Of course, these guys going down on this side are in a fairly low gear, trying to keep from heating, overheating their brakes. probably see a sign here directly that'll tell you something about runaway truck ramp right there. Yeah, there's one right there, the yellow sign. It says runaway truck ramp right one and a half miles. And what they are is it's just a place where the trucks can pull off and it's a uphill grade that's made out of gravel and uh, of course that slows it down. It says here grandma's doing 67 miles an hour, 68. I've got the cruise control set for 60. That doesn't make any difference. Oh, when I'm coasting, it's not going to matter. Uh, it'll slow you down some, but not enough. This is a 60 mile an hour curve. So I better slow down? Yeah, a little bit anyway. You're good. I wouldn't want to slide out of control. I don't think we're going to do that. Well, I wouldn't have to take want to have to take the runaway ramp thing either. Nope. Scare me to death. As you can see, pretty good grade here. I think this is 8% uh, if I remember right. I saw somewhere. The runaway truck ramp is going to be in 1,500 feet. There it is. I see it. Yeah, you can see it on the right-hand side. <coughs> If they get in too high a gear and the, and the brakes start getting hot, or they just pull off to the right, I'll turn the camera here, you can get a shot, and they just head right up the runaway truck ramp, right up there. It's that big rock gravel stuff, so uh, instead of it being smooth like the asphalt, why it slows the truck down. strips. Well, that big truck scared me. Hope that black car sitting there wasn't the highway patrol. I don't think it was. It's a BMW. <laughs> they have some nice cars for highway patrol, but I'm not sure they have BMW. No, they don't. Well, what's this truck doing down here? Oh, he just got back in the cab. Yeah, he's getting out, checking the load. Oh, is he looking at the motor or something? No, he's checking the load. I'm not making sure nothing's shifted. Looks like a gal. <clears throat> Whoa, we're going fast. Yeah, she's doing 74, it looks like. And the speed limit's 65. And here we're going to go down another grade. Oh, my gosh. Seven percent grade yeah. this time. 
can't imagine how fast you'd be going if you were on a bicycle. We get around this corner, we got a beautiful view here in front of us. Your screen's even dusty, honey. Yeah, I know it needs to be cleaned. Now we have another runaway truck ramp. We need to worry about this one. Oh, I know I do. As I'm we sorry. slam on the brakes. Well, I saw that guy coming and I. Mm -hmm. I slammed on the brakes. Sorry, everybody. We're not sure what the name of this little town is. <laughs> Minturn, it just said. Minturn? M I N T U R N, Minturn. But it's just like so many <coughs> little towns that you uh, encounter in Colorado with the colorful buildings and, of course, lots of shopping, places to eat, and everybody dressed in shorts and flip flops. Like it's warm. Like it's really nice out. <laughs> well, and I just went back to the motel and put my long pants and an undershirt and a long sleeve shirt on. Cute little town. None of them have Walmarts though. No. Just saw back there price of gas, four dollars and nine cents. When we left home it was three twenty-nine. We'll be back. Katrina is going to have to get recomposed. She certainly has a shot at the money here at the Teva Mountain Games. $2,000 cash prize up for grabs. Coming from Ottawa, Canada with a time of 2 minutes, 22 seconds. Making it through that very difficult section there that we saw um, our previous competitor have some problems with. A nice cross there from left to right through the goalposts. 
Hobie, she's having a nice line down the bank. Coming through here, what we call the third bath, one of the only real clean boots on the drop, Hobie. What do you think, um, what, are you, what are you thinking when you get into that pool, Hobie? Right there, you're kind of thinking you're home free that although the larger drops down there seem more ominous and are going to beat you up worse. I'll do it. Andrew, you go. Go stranger. If you hit the rock, you go some of the hardest right water in the world as well as one of the top free cell boaters. Oh, Very man. green to sunshine. He's trying to push her right, but she's cranking her way back over there. Looks like just her want some of that cat. She's definitely trying to light her eyes on the prize.
the dagger down the course, one of our sponsors. But you know, Rush Sturgis comes from a bloodline of kayaking. His father's been kayaking since he was 18 years old. So Rush, you know, he had no choice. He was born and his dad said, you know what, you're going to go kayaking. And that's what he grew up doing. Kind of like some of the kids grew up now playing Nintendo, Game Boy, or skateboarding. This kid grew up kayaking and now he's turned it into a career and a lifestyle and there's nothing the residency right now. He is out of the Czech Republic and moved to the States a few years ago, came out here, competed quite a bit. One of those events, the Tell Now Games, and he found a place here working as a safety packer here locally on the Arkansas River and also up on the Four Canyon of the Colorado and Yacht. Let's hear it for him, Bale, as he comes on by. Cheer him on. Absolutely motor and bongo hall. And he paddles like a check, as we like to say. Notice just how powerful, big, huge wingspan, nice right stroke and over, and he's making it look effortless. And as Dan points out, the guy must be battling like a 207 or plus size battle. Right now, coming into the bird bath, off that little boom, and no problem at all. A place play that has just slowed up so many paddlers, does nothing. And look at how fast Yaka makes his way through the bird bath. folks enjoyed the Teva Teva <laughs> Teva kayaking race from up on uh, I forget the name of the creek but Red Cliff I think is where they call that where it was uh, I know uh, that was my first race and I sure did enjoy it it was a lot of fun I think grandma even uh, got a kick or two out of it although she's uh, kind of tired now I think but anyway, thought we'd uh, put the camera back on here and give you just a little idea of what the road's like. Here on the two-lane road, this 24 highway runs from Leadville down to Vail. And, whoa! That shows you what the road's like. <laughs> Sharp curves. the curve. camera flying. Sharp curves. <laughs> Don't really have a mount to put it on. Left them all at home, but anyway. Here we go, around another yeah. curve. I'm going to hold the camera this time. Round and round we go. But uh, anyway, we're going to stop for some lunch down here in a little while. Maybe uh, drop in the Vail and have uh, some shopping and do some stuff like that. So uh, we'll check back with you later. Hope you have enjoyed the video so far.